Dr. Matt here. So I'm talking about dairy today. Tastes good, right? And we just want to make sure we're getting the right dairy in, in the right style, um, right, right processing patterns. And one thing I was looking at the other day is, you know, the my plate, the governmental guidelines for what we should be eating and, and, and what is most beneficial for us. And I was thinking, man, at some point there has to be a human to check off, check mark, and say this food, this guidelines is permitted. This is this is good stuff we got here. This is really gonna help people live longer, live stronger, have high, high quality health. And we're gonna distribute this out nationally. And I'm just wondering what research they are going to, what opinion they're going to when they're looking at and, and, and saying, yes, this is what we're gonna distribute. This is what we're gonna promote for men, women, and children. You know, because it doesn't take a nutritional degree or a master's in you know, dietics to recognize for the general population, recommending whole unprocessed foods is ideal. And yet, the recommendations for Americans is not to eat whole unprocessed, lightly processed foods. The recommendation is to eat fat-free, low-fat, fortified foods. You know, foods that have been uh, raped of all their nutritional value, their, their, their vitamins and minerals, and we just said, you know, we're going to like put them back in artificially. And this is going to be awesome for us. You know, that's, of course, we know if you're watching this, it's probably not the best thing ever to be doing that, right? And to think, you know, we actually are recommending this, or I'm not, but the, the my plate's actually recommending soy milk and soy yogurt over actual full fat, undenatured, unprocessed dairy. It's wild to me. But this, this is the state we're in, and that is why it behooves each of us to be you know, really vigilant about what we're putting in our body, why we're doing that, what marketing campaign we, we came in contact with that's promoting this. Because you know, media and health, public health experts, they often proclaim shock at the lack of health resilience, the inability of the American to withstand common infections, the, the burgeoning of you know, depression and anxiety, but the reality is we get what we eat. And if we consume ultra processed, fortified, you know, denatured, non whole foods over and over and over again, we're gonna get a bean that looks like it's dead. It, it looks like it's not capable of promoting life. So I'm Dr. Matt, we're gonna help out. We're gonna bring life to the table today. And uh, I hope if you haven't if you haven't already subscribed, please do DR wholeness, check it, give you good news all the time. Today we're looking at dairy. So if you do not have a dairy allergy or a dairy intolerance, man, I have some suggestions about how you could maximize the benefits of dairy. Because if you don't have issues with dairy, man, dairy can be a high, high value food, so easy to get your hands on, and you know, so easy to use as part of life to get a lot of nutritional value. So number one, I would be looking for A2, A2 variety dairy. And if you can get raw, get raw, ideally from a very reputable source, uh, because you know, generally speaking, raw milk from just a, a huge uh, you know, standard feedlot, super bad idea, really high chance you're gonna get sick. But if you're a reputable source, local, small dairies, man, great opportunity to get something that's undenatured and awesome for you. And if you don't feel comfortable getting raw milk still, then look for vat pasteurized milk. And vat pasteurization basically makes the milk sterile. So you do lose out on a lot of the beneficial bacteria that could support all manner of awesomeness in the body and even, even the uptake and absorption of nutrients. But uh, it does preserve, the vat, the vat pasteurization, vat pasteurization does preserve the omega-3 fatty acids, it does preserve the fat soul vitamins like A, D3, K2, uh, and make it so that you know, those stu still are available and not just getting you know, a fortified version. And I would say I, I have most confidence in the Alexandria brand, the A2A2 Alexandria brand for you know, vat pasteurization if you, um, if you are uncomfortable with going you know, straight to raw milk. And the, the Alexandria brand is, you know, is found in most places uh, across America. So we want to stay away from 
ultra pasteurize. That is step number one. Before I'd even look at organic and all that kind of stuff, I'd be look, looking at staying away from ultra pasteurized milk. Because ultra pasteurized milk, though it creates a more shelf stable product, it alters, this, this high heat alters the protein structure of the milk. And you lose the fat solid vitamins in the process. And often you'll see milk, you know, it's, it's fortified. It, they've, they've added back in vitamin A, vitamin D, uh, even calcium. But this is not the same as naturally occurring, you know, uh, matrix of these vitamins and minerals. And not only that, you've probably seen like, oh, high omega-3s. Uh, but they've added them in. They're not, they could be in there because this, this you know, cow or goat is gnawing on grass all day long. But because it's not getting that, it's, you know, it's getting corn and this uh, um, pseudo food to eat on and then they're um, you know, pasteurizing it to, to all manner of heat, all, all that omega-3 activity is gone. All right, so cha changing the protein structure through high heat actually changes the digestibility of the milk and basically the influence of these milk proteins uh, on our body. And so that whey protein, that casein protein that you know potentially could benefit, benefit us, has all these great um, effects for our muscle tissues and, and for uh, cholesterol and for detoxification and for immunity, that, that, that function has been changed. And now that thing that's supposed to help us, that protein that's supposed to help us, may actually be you know instigating an, an autoimmune-like response, may actually be instigating a, a leakier gut, may be promoting allergies and you know the whole smattering of digestive issues that so many people have related to dairy. You know, maybe it's not dairy's fault, maybe it's what we did to the dairy that's fault. Just like I would say with soybeans, maybe it's not soybeans' fault, maybe it's the fact that we've turned soybeans into this ultra-processed, genetically modified you know, freak of a bean and put it in everything. Maybe that's the problem. So ultra pasteurization, uh, it also inactivates the binding proteins for B12, uh, the carrier protein for folate. It decreases the body's ability to absorb vitamin B6, pyridoxine. Uh, it destroys riboflavin, another amazing B vitamin. Uh, <clears throat> and it also messes with uh, a really bioactive essential protein-like structure known as lactoferrin. And when lactoferrin is destroyed by ultra-pasteurization, you know, its ability, because it's not present anymore, to help with iron assimilation, which it's known for, goes by the wayside. Its ability to support uh, body composition, which it's known for, goes by the wayside. Its ability to help with the immune system goes by the wayside. And, you know, even a, a well-known viral infection over the last couple of years, it's 2023 when I'm making this, uh, you know, lactoferrin has been shown to have benefit in supporting the immune system and combating that. So it's gone. You know, e even the, the protein that shuttles calcium uh, is inactivated. So now we don't get to absorb calcium like we could have that, that is loaded in, in dairy products, right? And, you know, calcium is, is one thing we all think of when we think of milk. I mean, what is it? Oh, milk, cal what's something that has high calcium? Dairy, 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 dairy. And this very process, this very technique, destroys our capacity to get to the calcium. And yet there's this crazy amount of calcium in this liquid that, that could easily um, satisfy our calcium needs. So next on the list, hopefully ultra-pasteurization, knock that out of the park. The next on our list is homogenization. So I would stay away from homogenized dairy. Ultra pasteurization, homogenization, kick them to the curb. You know, the goal of homogenization is to make everything look the same. No clumps, no bumps, no, no things floating around my milk. I don't have to strain it or anything like that. You don't have to strain it anyway, but my kiddos, when they, you know, get the, sometimes when they get the uh, raw milk, they're like, they want to strain it because they feel like there's, there's, everything isn't together. But, you know, when you, you homogenize it, you make all the fat globules look really small, or you make them really small. Um, and by using this extreme pressure, you're actually affecting the structure, the function of those fats. And, you know, this, this process, unfortunately, you know, it's degrading them. 
and your fat particles that could be you know beneficial that could be supporting you that could be you know an anti-inflammatory effect the structure is changed and when you change change structure just with the, just like with the protein you change function and now these fats oxidize irritant that's what you're getting from them so homogenization also it frees up an enzyme called xanthine oxidase and xanthine oxidase uh, many food scientists actually think that this actually plays a role in the epidemic of heart disease and arterial, arterial plaque formation you know basically um, atherosclerosis because of it's not it's been freed up it's, it's not in its natural form and the body essentially doesn't know what to do with it and it creates a lot of oxidation within our blood vessels so the end result of us doing this stuff to our dairy products uh, is a great opportunity food a great easily accessible super inexpensive whole food substance has been degraded in value has literally been converted you know from something like a support life so easy to get our hands on and now it's a toxin and for many people a really really terrible toxin so i would consider that raw milk you know it has enzymes in it for every single mineral that is in the milk to enable us to utilize it it has the b vitamins it has you know b12 folate riboflavin pyridoxine it's got um, the fat soluble vitamins a d k2 it has uh, these omega-3 fatty acids so you may want to consider your local raw milk dealer your r local raw milk family ask them what's up how, you know what's what's your process and see about man maybe i could get some raw milk I, mean, I could give it a try start out slow and just see how, see how our body likes it in, instead of getting the homogenized ultra pasteurized because the thing about raw milk it's not going to come from some big old feedlot place you got to keep it small you can't have your animals walking around in a foot of slop in confined spaces they need to be out eating grass they need to be free to roam otherwise and disease dysfunction bacterial infections the potential is through the roof and you know they can't be getting a bunch of antibiotics and all that kind of stuff these babies need to be out there these cows these cow goats need to be free to roam and eat all that good grass that green stuff to digest it for you so you can you can get some of the richness from that so it, it, it is going to be tough you're gonna have to find somebody local if you want to get raw milk going um, in addition to all this uh, when it comes to milk yogurt kefir especially be sure to check for added sugar because the desire to add sugar is exponential crazy you know these these companies are often adding multiple teaspoons to four, a four ounce cup of yogurt and that's, that's like standard protocol when dairy yogurt kefir all all dairy already has it's got lactose it's, it has natural sugars in it it's already sweet so maybe add a little berries add some honey um, if, you're, if you're just starting out on your lower sugar journey but definitely pass on the added sugars because they will be hidden in there you may see pictures of blueberries and strawberries and you know little little um, vanilla plant on the front but if you look and turn the label you see whoa you know 20 grams of sugar 20 grams of added sugar 30 grams of added sugar it's like how in the world how they got five teaspoons in that four ounce cup but that's happening out there so that that also is, is a great challenge i think you got to watch out for when it comes to dairy products so i think about all these children i think about adults as well for that matter even the elderly who could easily be getting essentially a whole foods multivitamin in the form of say raw milk in liquid form that tastes delicious easy to consume but instead they're getting literally a dead white colored watered down substance devoid of fat increased with with excess sugar in it and fortified with some vitamins and some you know maybe mega-3 fatty acid fortification and they're they're getting nothing from it you know they, literally what they're getting in the end is you know allergies they're getting ear infections they're getting sinus congestion they're getting digestive distress with each and every cup and that does not have to be that way so i'm just here to promote and suggest to look into consider 
raw milk if you're consuming dairy products and finding a local supplier who has uh, you know, good sanitary um, activity going on and look into it for yourself. You know, what is the chance of getting you know, E. coli from, from raw milk uh, compared to you know, eating an apple that, that's also raw? You might be surprised. So let me know your experience with dairy, with raw milk, with goat milk. I love it, sheep's milk, cow milk, whatever, whatever kind of milk you're going after. And uh, you know, do you have someone you get, get milk from? Do you have your own, own cow or goat? Love to hear about it. I'm Dr. Matt. I'll see you guys, gals, next week for more health accumulation.